In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, Reign on earth. Fiat. Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our Lady Queen of all Saints. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So today we're going to begin, um, it's four parts of uh, Louisa and Divine Justice. And um, the whole reason for this is uh, what Jesus said to St. Faustina. Uh, what Jesus said to St. Faustina, he said, I will give the earth a time of mercy and then... Uh, I will give the earth uh, t a time of justice. So at the end of mercy, he says, it will begin uh, justice. And um, that's what he said to Louisa as well. He said to Louisa, he says, my mother brings divine mercy to the earth through the incarnation. And you, Louisa, bring divine justice to the earth. And so we're going to go through this this year because uh, divine mercy, or I should say the Jubilee year of mercy ends and, uh, in uh, 15 days from now. Uh, and that means that we are then going to go into the time of justice. And since Louisa is to bring justice to the earth, and she did not want to do that, uh, our job is to uh, begin to understand um, the time we're living in. The time we're living in is very um, unique. Uh, it's very... Um, uh, it's the it's the battle it's the it's the wages between heaven and earth the the battle between heaven and earth and the ground in which the demons fight and the angels fight is our souls so what the lord has done and this is the wonderful thing he says in the worst of times i will give because louisa would say to jesus when are these writings coming out if you say they're so important why aren't they coming out and this was in the you know 1900 1910 1930 and uh, Jesus says they will come out in the worst of times. He says they will come out when evil exhausts itself. So we haven't seen anything yet. Uh, and uh, what Jesus is giving to us is at this worst of times, he says, I give you the book of heaven. Now, the book of heaven uh, is Jesus uh, dictating uh, to Louisa, but not like any other saint before. Uh, he says, these words are my words. This book is my book. And he says, as you read this, as you study it, it's the only book in the world that will transform a soul. So as we're reading, as we're studying, as we're putting this into practice, what God is doing is he's expanding our souls. He's, 
he's uh, changing us. He's uh, transforming us to the point that he says to Louisa is you will be transmuted. And uh, transmutation means the inside and the outside is changed into a completely different element. So this is what God is doing. He's, he's touching our hearts, our minds, our souls. He's entering uh, uh, into the holy of holies of our soul to begin a, a, a new operation, but it's not brand new. It's the oldest thing that God gave to Adam. It's the first thing God gave to Adam. When he breathed, when God breathed into Adam with the Ruah of God, the breath of God, God said, basically, let us make man in our image and likeness. This is what, what has happened. And now, uh, you know, when Adam fell, it took 4,000 years before Jesus came to the earth to bring back that image of God through holy baptism. Uh, the sacraments are used to uh, bring us back to where God wants us to be. They're the remedies of the soul, Jesus says. So now he says 2,000 2, years after Jesus came to begin the universal life again, to begin the Catholic life again, uh, what happens is uh, uh, he's, he's touching our, our souls in a unique way, the way he did with Adam, so that we can be in God's likeness. Okay, so to be in God's likeness is to do what God does. And uh, that's what Jesus says in Scripture. You'll do far greater things than I. Well, how can we do far greater things than God? Well, in God's image and likeness, this is what we were called to do, to enter into this life of God, this light of God, this love of God. So the saints have brought us to this point, and now Jesus says, I want to bring you further. I want to bring you to uh, possess this gift. So uh, we're at the... We're at the point now where Jesus says uh, the church will have to change. Okay? And as you can see, the church needs to change. And it's not to go back to where we were in the 50s or the 40s or the 30s, but to enter into the new era of, of truly living the, the life of Jesus, truly living the life of Mary which the saints only gave us hints to, like St. Louis de Montfort. But what does the St. Louis de Montfort says? In the final days, they'll be the greatest saints in the history of the church, history of the world, and it's nothing that they have done, but what God has done for them. And that's what this book of heaven is. God has done this for us. He hasn't given this gift to uh, St. Francis. He didn't give this gift to, to uh, uh, St. Clair. He gave it to us. See, Louisa is for our time. When we, when we get to understand who Luisa Picaretta is, we begin to understand that God has great plans for his children. Uh, far, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. What is coming is so beautiful. It's so holy. It's so perfect. The church will be glorified. You know, even a, every aspect of our life is going to change. And, and that's why we're coming to the end of this era. That's what St. Uh, John Paul II told us. He told us that to get ready for the third millennium, get ready for the glory of the church, the new springtime of mankind. It's not the end of the world. It's the end of evil. It's the end of, of, the, it's the, end of the reign of the devil. The kingdom is coming. Jesus says the prayer, the Our Father, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven is being fulfilled uh, through this newborn, this firstborn, Luisa Picaretta. So again, our God has got great, great plans, and we're part of it. He has predestined us to live at this time. Uh, he has asked us to uh, be Catholic, to be faithful, to be obedient to the Holy Mother Church, to learn our dogma and our doctrine. And now he says, now, now I want to crown my church with this gift. I want to crown my church with this gift of gifts. Uh, and, and it will be through this little newborn, Louisa, that this is going to happen. So we'll begin on page one, Louisa and Divine Justice, part one. Jesus says to Louisa, Louisa, come to offer yourself before Divine Justice as victim of reparation for the offenses that are given. Okay, so the first thing that we have to see is Louisa as a victim. This is why she stayed in bed for 64 years. She could walk. But Jesus said at the age of 17, he said to her, Louisa, go to bed and stay there. And out of obedience, Louisa did this. She could walk. 
And uh, he says, uh, at 17, he gave her the mystical marriage. And he said to her very powerfully, uh, where all the other saints ended their spirituality with the, with the mystical marriage. Because you would receive the mystical marriage and then you'd have a few years and then you'd be dead. Because there was no place else to go. He says to Louisa, when she received the mystical marriage, he says, where all the other saints ended their spirituality, I'm beginning your spirituality. So this is why he said to her, go to bed, stay there, and write. And, and he says, I will tell you what to write. And uh, uh, if you want to see the pivotal point of understanding the divine will, it's in volume 17, May 4th, 1925. Uh, in volume 17, May 4th, 1925, uh, Jesus says to Louisa, Louisa, did you write everything? And she, she goes, yes, Jesus, I wrote everything. And he says, what if I were to tell you that you have forgotten the most important point? And see, when you read this, uh, you, you will begin to understand that we are going to enter into a new era. Uh, and it's a glorified era. It's the era of sanctification. We've had redemption, excuse me, we had have creation of the Father, we've had the redemption of the Son, and now we're going to enter into the time of sanctification. And that's what that's the whole role for Louisa. So Jesus says, Louisa, I want you to offer yourself before the divine justice as a victim of reparation. That's our life too. We say, Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful Catholics. Enkindle in us the fire of your love. That's, that's, that's the divine will. Send forth your spirit and we will be recreated. And then you, Holy Spirit, will renew the face of the earth through us. This is why St. Louis de Manfred says they will be the greatest saints in the history of the church, history of the world, and it's nothing that they have done but what God has done for them. So there's great things coming. So the first one, he says to Louis, says, Offer yourself before the divine justice as a victim of reparation for the offenses that are given and for the conversion of sinners who, with eyes closed, drink the poison at the poisoned font of sin. And that's where we are. Everything around us, who would have thought, you know, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, the things that are on TV? Who would have thought 15 years ago, 10 years ago, the things that, that are on the Internet that kids are getting involved in? Who would have thought that we would be uh, directed uh, and, uh, by our telephones to be focused on that as a means of living rather than our families. Everything has been changed. And it's been changed, why? Because the devil knows his time is coming to an end. And he wants to uh, distract us. He wants to uh, occupy our time. He, want to, he wants to occupy our thoughts so that we do not have the opportunity to read. And what, is he, what doesn't he want us to read? It's the, it's the book of heaven. Do you remember the, the, in, in the 30s how when Hitler um, threw all those books together and burnt all those books? The reason was to, uh, Father Bede, who was a good friend of Louisa, a German, uh, printed up the writings of Louisa, volume 1 through volume 19, in German. They were the original translations uh, from, of Louisa. And the reason for the burning of the books was to destroy the book of heaven. You have to understand, the book of heaven is going, to, is going to bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Look at the Dawn of a Mystery, the DVD uh, done by uh, Archbishop Piceri. What does he say? He says, no one in the history of the church has ever explained how the kingdom of God is going to be established on earth as it is in heaven. He says, this is Luisa's job. And the Vatican knows this. The Vatican came out with its book. And what does the Vatican title the book? The Son of My Will. The S-U-N of My Will. And then underneath that, Luisa Picaretta. See, the, the Vatican wants us to know that this is so essential for the church that it's going to change the face of the earth. And, and we're the ones that Jesus is asking us uh, to do this. So, he says, right now, you have to understand, your family, your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers, your parishioners have closed their eyes and they're drinking at the poison font of sin. This is all around us. 
The large field of suffering opens before you, Louisa. Yes, but also of graces. And it's the same thing for us. When we see something happening to our family, when we see something happening to our friends, our neighbors, uh, it's not to be oppressed by it, but to realize that God is going to fill us with graces to help them. Uh, it's, it's basically, as he says, uh, uh, to pray for the conversion of sinners. We want to be converted every day. We want our family to, to be converted. And he says, the graces that I'm going to give are going to astonish the world. This is what he tells Louisa. He says, I, Jesus, shall never leave you again. I, Jesus, shall come within you, Louisa, to suffer all that men do to me, making you, Louisa, share in my pains for help and for comfort and therefore, he says, I give you my mother, Mary. So here we have uh, Jesus' promise to Louisa that he's never going to leave her. He's promising her that she will suffer with him. Now, all of us are suffering sp spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. All of us are going through great difficulties. But when we link ourselves to Jesus and Mary, uh, we are. Well, this is the same thing. He's coming within us to share, to suffer with that all men are doing to him. And so when you go through a difficulty, physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, you have to understand that Jesus is the one who suffered the most. And he's allowing you uh, to suffer with him, which is one of the greatest gifts that God can give to mankind. Suffering is redemptive. And uh, we're at the point now where most people in the hospital over a certain age is just morphine to death. Uh, and it's not, it, why? Well, we want them to have mercy. Well, no. Suffering is very, very, very important. My mother, when she was got sick, she said to my sister, who's a nurse, don't let me go into the hospital. And my sister says, I understand. I, I don't want to go into the hospital. And she says, no, if I go to the, at the hospital, they won't let me suffer. Suffering is a very, very important. Uh, it's redemptive. Physical, spiritual, mental, emotional. And that's why... When you, uh, if you're going through any sufferings and you're oppressed by it, uh, read what Jesus tells Louisa about suffering, how, how powerful it is, how you are saving souls from falling into hell with, with just a fiat. It's, uh, why? Because he says very clearly, I will come within you to suffer all that men do to me, making you share in my pains. So the first one that we respond to in our suffering is to say to Jesus, I'm sorry, Lord, that you have to go through this. I, I, want to, I want you to come down from the cross just for a minute so that, I, so that I can take your place. I want you, Jesus, to get some relief, and I'll take your place. This is, this is uh, an extraordinary thing that the, the saints have taught us, but now more so with Louisa. We're going to see how important suffering is. As for creatures, use profound silence and be nine and submissive to with everyone. Louisa, let your life, your breathing, your thoughts, your affections be continuous acts of reparation to placate my divine justice, to offer me along with them the bothers from creatures which shall not be, a f be few. So here, profound silence. This is one of the things Jesus says to Louisa. Those that talk a lot show that there's no interior. And, and that's what people do. They, they, they go on. and This is why we think we have 24-hour news. Uh, it's just show that there's nothing there. So he says, use profound silence. And that's what we have to discipline ourselves to do, uh, to be silent. Um, and why? Uh, with this submission of silence to everyone, with everyone, let your life, your breathing, your thoughts, your affections be continuous acts of reparation to placate my divine justice, offering me along with them the bothers from creatures which shall not be few. So here we have this uh, opportunity again with Jesus uh, to be silent. Instead of giving our point of view, what we want to say, what we want to share, it's to be silent. Those that are silent are more like the Blessed Mother. Those that are um, talking all the time say to Jesus that there's no interior life. There's no, there's no uh, oneness with Jesus in silence. You know, uh, Jesus spoke when he had to speak. 
uh, but other times than that, he was silent. You, you hear Our Lady speaking a few times in sacred scriptures. Yeah, she was the one who taught the apostles all about Jesus. Yet, nothing is recorded, basically, of, of Joseph. The, he was silent. He was with Jesus. And I, again, this silence is so important, uh, especially today. Turn off the television. Turn off the radio. Turn off the, the internet. Turn off the newspapers and magazines. And enter into that silence. Jesus says, go to your room, close the door, and pray. That's, that's to pray uh, with the holy of, within the Holy of Holies of your soul. To enter into this life with Jesus. To let him teach you. See, each and every one of us in this divine will has an has a important, unique role and an office by, uh, given to us by Jesus Christ. We have to learn what that is. And you're not going to learn it by talking. You're going, to be, you're going to learn it by being alone with Jesus, alone with Mary, through Louisa, to listen to Jesus speak to your hearts. When you read the, uh, the You Must Know book, it, it's very clear. Jesus is saying, it's a command from Jesus, you must know this. You must understand this. And that's, that's a command from Jesus. So as you read, as you reread, as you ponder it, as you meditate on it, as you put it into practice... Jesus is teaching you. And the same thing with Be Attentive. Be Attentive book is so essential to understand how to live in the divine will. And, and it's, it's not through the saints. I mean, I love the saints. But it's through what Jesus taught Louisa. This is how to do it. So Jesus says very clearly, um, uh, uh, be silent, have that profound silence, be submissive, we, we, let your life, let your breathing, let your thoughts, let your affections be a continuous act of reparations to Jesus. Why? To placate his divine justice. To offer to Jesus, along with everybody else, all the bothers from creatures, which will not be uh, a, a few. O oh, Jesus, Holy Spouse, hold back the scourges that your divine justice has prepared. So in, even in volume one, Louisa sees that mankind is so far from God that God has to, he has to scourge the earth. He says that to Louisa, this gift is so beautiful that the earth must be uh, um, punished. I mean, you don't kill three babies per second worldwide and have God just sit back, you know, not saying anything. He's given us the opportunity. He's given us the opportunity to, to read and to study this book, in order to uh, really begin to live his life, to live Our Lady's life. So Jesus shows Louisa what he has to do. He, I mean, Scripture tells us two-thirds of the world will be gone. Jesus tells Louisa that the large majority of humanity will be gone. Why? God has to give everybody what they want. How are you living? What are you focused on? What's, what, what do you, where, where are you all day is going to show you what, what God is going to give you. He has to give you what you want. He gave the devil hell because that's what the devil wanted. And now it's coming to us where our lady says very clearly, you have to change. If you don't change now, you will have no time to change. Okay? things are coming that are going to be very extraordinary, very difficult. Jesus says to Louisa, it's never been seen before and will never be seen again. Uh, our job is to understand that the scourges of God's divine justice are prepared. They're going to come upon the earth. And it's not to terrify you. Because the fire that's coming, the first, the first thing that happened was the flood, water. And it washed the world clean. The second was Jesus on the cross. The blood of Jesus washed the world clean. The third, Jesus says, is he's going to judge the world by fire. Okay? That fire is symbolized by the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary. If you are in love with Jesus and Mary, if you're faithful and obedient to the church, if you're praying your rosary, wearing your scapular, obedient to Holy Mother Church, it will be ecstasy. If you are in disobedience or in, uh, as a renegade, as if you are in rebellion and saying, well, I'm going to do what I want, I don't care what the church says, it will be wailing and grinding of teeth. 
Because that's what our lady said. It will be good for some. It's going to be bad for most. So we have to look at our life. and In what way are we disappearing? Jesus says, and you know, that's what John the Baptist said, I have, to, I have to be insignificant. Jesus has to be everything. You know, I must decrease. He must increase. And, our, and the same thing in our own life. Where is Jesus? Are, are we the ones that are um, in charge? Or is it Jesus in charge of our life? Do we do our prevening act in the morning and, and really say, come divine will, breathe in my breathing, beat in my heart beating. You reign in me. Gaze in my gazing, listen in my listening, walk in my walking. You, Lord, you be the Lord of my life today. Or is it, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to make sure this is done. I'm going to make... God says, you're going to get what you live for. And if we... if I, I mentioned the story before. There was a man down my street and he never went to church, never cared about anybody but himself. And his lawn was immaculate. His trees were perfect. His flowers were beautiful. That's what he spent his time on. And when he died, everything fell apart. Everything withered. New people came in, dug up all his plants, threw them all out. His whole life was wasted. And see, Jesus is saying to us, where is your life going to continue? Where, What's going to continue with you? And, and it's, it, this is why he's given us this book. He says, if the multiplicity, Louisa says, if the multiplicity of the iniquities of men is great, if there is the immense sea of your blood which you can bury them, in this way your justice shall be satisfied. If you have nowhere else uh, to go to delight yourself, come into me, Louisa. And this is Louisa. I, Jesus, I give you all of my heart that you, Jesus, may somehow rest and delight with it. It is true that I am too beguile of vices, but you, Jesus, can purify me. You, Jesus, can make me what you want. But please, O oh Jesus, placate yourself. If the sacrifice of my life is necessary, oh, how gladly I, Louisa, would make it for you as long as I may see your own images spared. So here is Louisa saying she would sacrifice her life for each and every one of us. When you read the lives of the saints, especially uh, you know, the saints, the North American martyrs, which is just down the street from here, basically, an hour or so away. Uh, what did St. John de Bebeuf say? He said, uh, may I suffer all the martyrdoms of all the saints so that these savages will be converted. Uh, at that time, savage was not, a, was not a bad term. It was a normal term. So what did they do? They, when they captured him, they skinned him alive. And then they put burning hatchets in front of his, uh, around his neck, in the front of his body, and burning hatchets, glowing hatchets, behind his back. So if he went forward, uh, his his chest was uh, bat, burnt. If he bent forward, uh, if he bent forward, his back was burnt. No matter what he did, he had no skin. And they tore, they ripped it all off him. They because he looked at them with love. They cut out his tongue because he would not scream in pain. Uh, they burnt him at the stake. They scalped him. They and Then finally, after three days, uh, they cut out his heart and they ate it. And they said, this is brave. We want this bravery. Now, here, here is a man who did go through all the martyrdoms of all the saints. This is not what we have to go through. We have to go through more. <laughs> And that is not to give life to our human will. So when you're having a coffee, it's, you're, you say, Jesus, drink in my drinking. You're not going to drink anymore. You're, you're going to say, Jesus, gaze in my gazing. Jesus, breathe in my breathing. I do not want to breathe in the human will ever again. This is the martyrdom of martyrdoms, Jesus says. And the consequences of what the saints went through uh, is, is what's well, agony into ecstasy. But for the consequences of us, not doing our human will, is peace, joy, and happiness. This is what God wants for us. He wants us to begin to live heaven on earth. And if you're doing your human will, and if you don't know what your human will is, it's what we say when we go to confession. 
Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. This is what I thought. This is what I said. This is what I did. This is what I failed to do. That's our human misery. And Jesus says, I don't want you to live there anymore. I want you to live in my holy divine will. What, where, what is that? That's peace, joy, and happiness. And the Lord interrupted me and continued, Here is exactly where I, God, wanted you. If you offer yourself to suffer no longer every now and then, as, as up until now, but continuously every day for uh, a certain given time, I shall spare mankind. So who was the one that stood in the breach to ask Jesus not uh, to destroy mankind? It was Louisa. As Moses stood in the breach, when, when God says, I'll destroy all this people, I'll make you a nation, I'll make you a glorious people. And Moses stood in the breach and said, no. She says, you know, I, you know, kill me, but don't kill them. And this is what Louisa did. He says, uh, and then Jesus says, this is where I wanted you. I wanted you at that point, like Moses, to stand in the breach and say, no, destroy me, but don't destroy them. And he says very, very clearly, um, see how I shall do it. I, Jesus, shall put you, Louisa, between my divine justice and the iniquities of souls, of the sins of mankind. Who's between? I mean, that's Jesus. Jesus stood between God the Father and us. He, he stood between uh, the justice of the Father and the sin of mankind. And he took upon himself the sin of the world. Now, Jesus is saying to Louisa, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to put you, Louisa, between my divine justice and the sins, the iniquities of souls. And when my divine justice sees itself full of iniquities to the point of not being able to contain them and is forced to send mankind thunderbolts of the scourges in order to chastise souls, and finding you, Louisa, in the middle, instead of striking them, I will strike you. So who is the one who suffered the most next to Jesus and Mary is Louisa. Only in this way shall I be able to content you in sparing men, not otherwise. So who is the... See, this is what we're, this is what we're going to focus on. We're focusing on Jesus crucified. No one has ever done what Jesus did. And then at the foot of the cross, Mary, no person ever went through the sorrows and the sufferings that Our Lady did uh, next to Jesus. And now we have the third suffering, Louisa. He says, you're going to stand in the way of all of mankind. And when I see them to the point of needing to be destroyed, I will strike you, Louisa. This is the reason why when you read the, the 36 volumes, Jesus says to Louisa that I will crucify you every day. See, this is what the church is, is recognizing. The, the amount of suffering that Louisa went through. The amount of, of uh, uh, divine justice that she endured. Why? So that we would not be crushed. So that we would not... This, this is... Louisa possesses the true life of Jesus and the true life of Mary. Well, what is it based on? It's based on suffering. So you have the three that suffer the most, Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. And when we get to understand this, when we go to Louisa, things change in our lives as well. He says very clearly, um, And then all afflicted Jesus would say to me, My spouse, Louisa, return into your body once again to take upon yourself the pains destined for mankind, the sinner. In this way, being appeased, the divine justice shall use mercy on mankind. So here, uh, Jesus would take her from her body every day, and uh, uh, they would tour the they would tour the universe. It, it's when you look at the when you go to Corrado or see pictures of Corrado, you'll see Luisa's socks were filled with holes and, and they were dirty, and uh, she never left bed. But Jesus would show us through her socks, that he toured, they toured all over the universe. I remember when I first looked at Louisa's socks, I, I went, well, see, they could have bought her some new socks because somebody else's socks that she's wearing. But it, in reality, 
the, Jesus showed the world that he took her all over the universe. And uh, um, every day they'd have to put those, the, those dirty socks on. I mean, they, weren't, they were washed, but they were always stained. Uh, but God says to her, return to your body. Why? So that you can take upon yourself the pains that were destined for mankind. In this way, divine justice will be appeased and mercy will be given to mankind. He says, you have seen it. Your words have not shaken mankind, not even with reasons. And there is nothing left but pains that are the most powerful means in order to satisfy divine justice and to make the sinner surrendered. surrendered. After 9-11, the churches were filled throughout the United States for a very short period of time. Yeah, this is the time of mercy. I remember said to, somebody said to me when the Pope mentioned that there will be we're asking for mercy then we must be on our knees. We're asking for mercy. We have to be on our knees. And, and it's not over yet. We've got 15 more days and uh, uh, at the end of this, uh, uh, it's it's going to God's going to then give divine justice to the world. Um, that's what he says to Faustina. Uh, that's what he tells Louisa. So again, hang on to your hats. This is going to be great. It really is. Okay. Okay. So he he wants the sinner to surrender. To be docile, to to be submissive, to whom? To the Lord. When that happens, goodness it takes place, because separated from God, all you have is hell. And He says, I, "I want you to be with Me in heaven for all eternity." And at this point, that's pagan. That's where the youth are today. But the great thing about pagans is they can be converted. And God is going to bring about a great conversion to all the world. And uh, it's going to be glorious. That's why I'm saying, it's, he says it's like the giving birth. You know, it's going to be more and more intense pain until finally the child. Uh, we're going to have to go through some difficult things. This is planned by God. We have been allowed by God to be alive at this time to go through this. I mean, he... How are we going to get through this? When we, when we recognize the beauty of Louisa and linking ourselves to Louisa, uh, we will be hand in hand with Louisa. This is what God has planned. I had such a, a vivid clarity being in front of the Divine Son. Okay, this is, this is where we're going as well. We're, we're going to enter into this life of God. This divine son. Uh, Jesus was clothed. His clothing was more brilliant than the sun. Our Lady of Guadalupe. She was the woman clothed with the sun. This is what Jesus. This is where Jesus brought Louisa. And where Jesus wants to bring us. You have to understand. This is mystical. Uh, don't try to put it in a human understanding. Cause, because you'll say. Well I'll just be burned up and gone. No. He wants you to enter. God is so beautiful. He's so holy. He's so perfect. He's so loving. It's like entering into a divine son. And especially I could see my littleness, my non-entity of my being, and I was studded, stunned at how daring I had been, wondering from where had I taken the courage to offend God so good, who in the very act in which I was offending him assisted me, preserved me, nourished me. And see, all of a sudden... See, when, when, when you see God, uh, you're going to fall on your face. I remember this um, great holy priest. I said, when, when you die and you see God, what are you going to do? He says, I'm going to be wearing brown pants. He says, I don't care what color they are. They're going to be brown. He says, you're going, and I said, well, what do you mean? He says, you're going to see holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth. God Almighty. He says, you're, you're, you're going to be cut to the core. He says, God is so beautiful. He's so holy. So he says, so this is what Luis is saying. 
Here she is in front of God, and she knows her nothingness, her littleness, her non-entity. And she's saying, what have I done? How have I offended him? How have I? But yet he is assisting me. He's preserving me. He's nourishing me. And if he had any rancor with me, it was for the sin I committed, and which he greatly hated. And he loved me immensely. He excused me before the divine justice and was all occupied with removing that wall of division between God and man, between soul and God, that sin has produced. So here, this is she is in heaven. You see, this is the consequences of the divine will. She is in heaven at this point. And the, the, the sin that has uh, stopped this, this oneness between God and man has, has, is gone. He removed the wall of division between the soul and God that sin had produced. When I had finished the accusation that lasted about seven hours, she went to confession for Jesus, uh, with Jesus for seven hours. She who said her worst sin was wanting to become a nun so that she, was, she didn't stay in bed and she could do something for mankind. She says, Jesus, I'd rather be a nun rather than being here in bed. She says, that was my worst sin. She was in confession for seven hours with Jesus. Do we have any chance? <laughs> Lovable Jesus took the aspect of a loving father. And since I was exhausted in my strength because of the sorrow, more so since I saw that the sorrow was not enough, to be sorry as much as it befitted my sins, to encourage me, he told me, Louisa, my daughter, I myself wanted to make up for you. So I apply to your soul the merit of the pain that I had in the Garden of Gethsemane. This alone can satisfy the divine justice. See, he took upon himself all of our sinfulness. And he was rejected by God, the Father. You know, this was the worst thing that Jesus went through. And, and what he took upon himself is he says here, I want to make up for you. So I apply to you, your soul, the merits of the pains that I had in the Garden of Gethsemane. This alone satisfies the divine justice. Volume 2, February 28, 1899. This is the very first day she wrote. Volume 1 uh, was, after she got done with Volume 2, Volume 1 the, the priest said, how did you get here? That's volume one. So when we read volume one, it's, that's why it's so, there's no dates on it. It's, it's very complicated. Uh, it's very intense. Is because she's saying, this is, this is how I got to volume two. This is where I am. This is what Jesus did. Now in volume two, February 28, 1899, this is the first day that she wrote, now just as this soul, Louisa, abhors sin, and that's where we have to be, we have to abhor sin. We cannot uh, uh, tolerate it. We can't. I mean, that's, that's what the world's saying. Tolerate everything. Uh, toleration is no part of God. He doesn't tolerate us. He, he, he sacrificed himself for us. It's, and toleration is, is, is not Christian. It's not Catholic. Uh, when something goes wrong in your family, you can stand your ground and you can say, this is wrong, and you say it with love, but you don't say, okay, I, I'm going to follow your pagan rituals. No, you don't have to do that. You don't tolerate that. You say, basically, this is Catholic, we are Catholic, and this is what I want for you, my children, but uh, if you don't want it, I can't change. I remember uh, a good friend of mine, when, when he uh, stood his ground, um, when his, when his daughter was living with somebody. And they said, come on over for Christmas. He says, I can't. And they says, you're destroying the family. You don't love me. You, For two years, he went on with us until finally the, the daughter said, you know, you know you're right, Dad. I, I've got to come back to the church. Our job is to give the faith to the children, not to compromise our faith. So you don't tolerate and so we have to abhor sin. And, and we don't have to hate the child. We don't have to hate the people. But this is wrong. This is, this is how we have to live. 
since she also feels compassion for others and prays for those whom she sees walking in the path of the Principe. Principe, how do you say that? She, thank you. I have friends named Principe, and I always bring up their name at this point. She unites herself with children. With with she unites herself with Jesus Christ and offers herself as a victim in order to placate divine justice and to spare creatures the deserved chastisements. You have to understand. You don't kill babies and not be punished. You don't live alternative lifestyles and not be punished. You know, does, does people forget some Sodom and Gomorrah? You have to understand this. You can't have. Uh, uh, you can't enter into that pagan world. You have to. You have to abhor it, and you have to abhor it to such an extent that you want nothing to do with it. And if the sacrifice of her life were necessary, oh, how I, how gladly she, he's talking about herself, she, Louisa, would make it for the salvation of one soul alone. March 10th, 19, 1899. My daughter Louisa, my divine justice uh, has grown too heavy and the offenses I, Jesus, have received from men are so many that I can no longer sustain them. So the scythe of death, the sigh of death is about to harvest much Suddenly, by means of disease, diseases, and that's what's coming again. Um, let's see, one out of four uh, 17 to 24 year olds have veneer, venereal disease of the mouth. One out of four. That might encourage you not to receive from the chalice, but um, it's, uh, uh, it, it's very important that we understand that, well, people say, well, it's the blood of Christ. Yeah, that's true, but the outside of the cup where the lip hits, is not uh, been cleaned, if you want to say. They say that uh, the amount of venereal disease is on the increase to such an extent that there's um, untreatable syphilis and gonorrhea now. And it's, it's, it's spreading like crazy. Why? People are living as outside of God's law. Again, the, the death is about to harvest much, suddenly by means of disease. What, what, happened, what happened to Europe uh, after World War I? The majority of people that were killed were not killed in war. They were killed by disease. The chastisements I shall pour upon the world are so many that they shall be a sort of judgment. This is, this is uh, again, where uh, we have to understand it, what's coming is going to be really interesting. So we'll end there and come back in 15 minutes in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.